Hello and welcome. Today I want to go over the Faraday NX3 bag that was sent out to me from FaradayDefense.com. This is an 8x10 bag and it is a dual plated bag, meaning it has two types of metal inside the fabric. It has both nickel and copper. Now according to the website, this blocks Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, cell signals, GPS, RFID signals, as well as EMF reduction and EMP protection slash CME protection. Now this cell phone that we have here, we're going to use this as, as one example. It operates on a 700 megahertz to 900 megahertz band. We can tell that the transceiver inside is also receiving 2.4 gigahertz bandwidth information as well. So it does multi, is a dual band type of uh, radio inside of here, duplex radio in this phone. And we can tell that the signals here we're getting from both our router and the cell phone signal. So we know that it is operating on both bands there, UHF and super high frequency bands. Right now we have full signal. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the bag here. But before we do that, let's go over the bag's material. On the outside, we have a nice textured material, the metallic, and it covers the back completely, along with double-stitched closures on the side. If we open up the back here, you can see that it has a nice Velcro closing system, which completes our conductive closing of the bag, or circuitry, if you will. On the inside, we have a fine gradient material so this won't scratch any sort of glass items and whatnot or screens in your electronic devices so that's very nice and it's a very effective way of closing up the electrical seal of the bag to really make sure that there's no air gaps let's go ahead and put this inside and I'm going to talk about polarization on antennas briefly here so we have our phone inside the bag it's laying horizontally now we're going to try to do a test in both the horizontal plane and the vertical plane, meaning we're going to pick up the bag in a few seconds here and hold it vertically. The reason why we're going to do that is I'm assuming most cell phone towers have antennas that are vertical to transmit out their signals. And also the router that I have here is vertically polarized. And what, what, that, what does that mean basically is if we have two antennas and they're being held vertically, that means the signal gets out effectively to each other. But if one is horizontal or perpendicular or not polarized to the other antenna, there's a loss and an attenuation of signal to that antenna. I, I believe it's about 23 dB attenuation. I could be wrong. It might be. It's in the 20s, I think. And that is such a high loss that won't be an effective test. So in other words, we need to match our antennas both vertically or horizontally. So since I, I'm not too sure of the cell phone towers polarization, I believe it's vertical. So we're going to go ahead and hold up the phone in a vertical fashion. I'm assuming the antenna inside the phone as vertical as well at this moment. So I'm going to hold it up for a few minutes to make sure that we're polarized properly. And then I'm going to put the bag back down and open it up and check the signal. Okay, let's open it up quickly here. I'm going to hold down the seals so that it doesn't return to normal functioning. So we can kind of get a view of how it worked out on the phone. Now let's go ahead and grab it inside real quick. And as you can see, the bars went down to two. Now I've done this test before and it ranges depending on how fast they pull it out of the bag before it starts receiving signal. Uh, the LTE won't be there. There will be a circle there on the phone. So let's go ahead and put it back in there real quick just to show that it can block. Uh, I'm just going to keep it near the edge so I can pull up pretty quickly. And we'll just hold down the, the front cover here making contact. Okay, let's pull it out again and just to make sure. Yep, signal is all the way down to one bar. Usually it's down to one bar or it's a complete circle with the cross through it. So it's going to take some time to get back up to the internet. So we can see that this does work as advertised, as they mentioned on the website. And we have another test we're going to do. We're going to take our phone here and put it to the side. I have two radios here. The first test we're going to do is with the Yaesu VX3R. This is a dual band ham radio. We're going to put it into the FM broadcast portion of the band here and to a local radio station 
I'm going to see how well it receives inside the bag as a reception test. Okay, let's put this inside the bag. And it should be going deaf right now. And it is. And again, with the polarization, we're horizontal. The FM broadcast station is vertical because most cars antenna systems are vertical. And generally, that's how most FM transceivers are set up. So I'm going to take this and stand it up vertically here. And as you can see, no reception whatsoever on that broadcast station, which is in the Hudson Valley. Not very far from me. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Now we have full signal again, even as a horizontal polarized and vertical. Okay, let's take that off and go back to our two meter setting. This is the calling frequency on two meter ham radio. I'm going to do another quick test. I'm going to make sure the volume is up now. Put it up to about 22 on the radio here. And we're going to go ahead and put that inside the bag. And then I have another transceiver right next to me, a Yesu VX1R. It does about 500 milliwatts out. And again, this is with the antenna attached to the radio inside the bag. Okay, we have it sealed up. And it's horizontal polarized, so we're going to match the polarization again horizontally. Let's go ahead and take this, and we have a radio here. kac 2 bw portable testing. And no squelch has opened up on the radio. kac 2 bw portable, all clear. Okay, let's take this and stand it up vertically. Maybe that's probably what's stopping it, right? We'll hold this vertically. kac 2 bw portable testing. KAC2BW portable testing at 500 milliwatts. Now again, this is not a scientific test. This is just a home test here. I don't have scientific or laboratory conditions or equipment, but we can see that the radio is not receiving with the radio almost next to it, about maybe six inches away at 500 milliwatts. Both antennas are both horizontally and vertically tested. Let's go ahead and try that again. Let's do the horizontal test without the bag now. I'll put it on the bag here. KC2BW portable testing. KC2BW portable all clear. Let's do it vertically so we make sure that the vertical part is working. This is KC2BW portable testing. KC2BW portable testing all clear. So as we can see, the radio squelch does open up and it does work when it's outside the bag. When it's inside the bag, it does not work. So we know at least on one part that the radios do not communicate when it's inside the bag. So the bag is definitely blocking signals from getting inside. Uh, even though this is only 500 milliwatts, it's very close. And in theory, it should be able to get through the bag and talk to the radio. But it does not. So we know these bags are generally good to go in the VHF portion, the UHF portion uh, for the cell phone coverage part, and also a portion of the Wi-Fi band, which is 2.4 gigahertz or around that bandwidth. So that's very important. And this does work as advertised. Now they do list on FaradayDefense.com that the bag itself is about 85 to 90 dB of attenuation. They make that claim. I don't have any way to test out if it's exactly 85 to 90 dB, but there's another gentleman on YouTube who has managed to test out these bags, and that's where I found out about the company initially. His name is EMP Doctor. So if you go and look him up, he's got a lot of fascinating videos on how Faraday cages work, and he's tested these products as well and other various products with his own test equipment, and he's got more advanced equipment than I do. And I found his videos pretty convincing on the subject matter, which is why I reached out to Faraday to uh, test out their bags and their products. And as we can see, they, they do work. They work effectively. And what I like about these bags is that they have a sewn-in Velcro attachment point here, or rather a closing point. So it makes it incredibly convenient to use this in everyday activities. You can put a radio inside or a phone, a light. Um, your watch to make sure you have a watch in case there's a C EMP or a CME. These bags will have a reduction effect on those types of instances. And of course, RFID will be blocked with this as we've seen. So that's a very nice thing. 
Very good bag. I'm glad they sent this out to me for review. I really appreciate it. FaradayDefense.com. Thank you. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the bag. I do recommend you check them out. You check out EMP Doctor on YouTube as well. And check out his videos. And uh, thanks for watching.